Hello again, Mavic Traders, and welcome back to Currency 101 series, Module 2. In this module, we'll be talking more about formulas. So, in the previous module, you learned about currency baskets, and the way you create currency baskets is by creating these custom formulas. So, in this module, we'll dive a little bit deeper into how to do these things and uh, get the most uh, better results out of it. So, we'll be talking about custom formulas and how to put the price action on how to put the different uh, price action into uh, into different perspectives. So search bar, this is again, we'll be using uh, in trading view, it's just like a calculator. So this is where not only a simple custom search that we can do, we can actually do a whole lot of different things by comparing one to the other. We'll be talking about equations, so there's countless ways to create those equations. And then price action, again, great way to do your relative strength and weakness analysis, and that is something that you'll be primarily using in your day-to-day -day uh, charting uh, and technical analysis. Okay, so let's get into TradingView platform and then start to uh, do some practice on these custom formulas, how to add them, and also take a look at all the other equations that you can create to compare things and to do your relative strength and weakness analysis. So in the custom formulas, uh, you will see that the currency baskets are already added in the list. And this is just merely a custom formula that you add to create those average of those baskets. Uh, so for example, in this one, if you look at the, the, the formula uh, right, over, right on the top over here, you'll notice that this thing is Kiwi dollar. It's just a Kiwi basket. So what we're doing is that we're adding all the Kiwi crosses and we're dividing by seven. So there's seven currency pairs. So we add all the currency pairs and we divide it by seven. So you get the, you get the, you get the currency, uh, the equation of, of the uh, average of all seven together divided by, by seven. So let's just actually run a hypothetical uh, scenario. Let's just say, okay, we know what the S&P is doing. We know what the NASDAQ is doing. We know what the Russell is doing. So how about we just create a basket and see what the equity markets are doing overall? So to get the average, what you do, we can, we can do the exact same thing. We can do SPY. Plus, we can do uh, NASDAQ. So, actually, let's just use a future symbol. So, US 500 plus US 100 plus US 2000 for small caps plus the US 10. And then here we have, we have four indices divided by four. And right there, we have now a custom basket for the equity markets. So looking at equity markets as a whole, but not just the S&P or the NASDAQ. So we can see how this is a way we can draw some comparisons and see which one is doing better than the other. So what is this basket telling us? Well, the basket is telling us that this thing is right at the resistance. So it hasn't broken out yet. It's right at the resistance. Now, if we compare this to S&P 500, what are we going to notice? that? This thing already had broken out. If I take a look at NASDAQ, it's so US 100, you'll see that, well, the, the, the NASDAQ is just bouncing right off that. So it's a very easy, quick comparison that we just did to see which one is outperforming and which one is underperforming. S&P is outperforming. Now, the Russell, the small caps, is underperforming. And we have the NASDAQ, which is right in the middle there. So this is where you get to run these scenarios. You can also compare one to the other. Let's just say we want to compare S&P versus the NASDAQ. So US 500 divided by US 100. So you notice that in the search bar, this is where you run these equations. You use this as a bit of a calculator. You have a divide, you have a net, you have a minus plus multiplication. So this is where you can run all those hypothetical situations. So right now we are looking at S&P comparing it to the NASDAQ. So what, is, what are we seeing? On a daily chart, we're seeing that the NASDAQ actually was outperforming the, the S&P. So this is where you're already getting that difference. Now you can take a look at US 500 against the US 2000, which is S&P against the small caps. And you can see that clear divergence there. So we pretty much do the exact same thing when we look at currencies. So you're always comparing currency one to the other. So we look at Aussie and we compare it to the yen or the dollar or all the other other currencies. But all the other asset classes, they are pretty much on their own. So you don't compare that to anything. Um, so we know what the S&P is doing. We know what cryptocurrency is doing. 
we know where Bitcoin is at. Uh, again, Bitcoin is also a bit of a pairing as well because it's BTC USD. It's just not BTC. So it's always one comparing it to the other. So the good thing about the trading view in the search bar is that we can compare one to the other. This is what we primarily do in our relative strength of weeks and analysis. And then we also create these baskets. Uh, and then again, you can create a lot of other custom baskets to kind of see the overall overall results. So for example, we can create a custom basket for, we can, we can say, well, let's just add all the dollar crosses and, and uh, Aussie, CAD, and Kiwi. You know, we can add them together divided by three and then here we go we have we have three different uh we have like an average of those three so um but most most mostly you'll notice that we use these uh, currency baskets and then uh, from time to time we run these comparisons on how to how to make those uh comparisons to to the markets and uh what's outperforming us what's, what's in the performing so go ahead uh play around with it use the search toolbar uh this is where practice will get you uh, much better results over time. So a quick recap, create uh, your currency baskets and then add them to your watch list. We should also practice by creating equations and then using those equations to do relative strength and weakness analysis. You should also create formulas, not only for currencies, but for all other asset classes.